Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and Operation Dynamo which is the current running operation. Now uh, if you're unaware somehow this is the tie-in that uh, Wargaming are doing with Dunkirk, the Christopher Nolan film that's just come out and in this operation you are rescuing the British Expeditionary Force from the beaches of Dunkirk. So it's uh, you and six other people in destroyers and a whole bunch of bots in little civilian ships. And your job is to take as many soldiers as you can across the channel. Now this is um, in some ways an easy one so long as no everyone knows what they're doing and everyone positions themselves correctly. Um, but it's also got a couple of interesting features and a couple of new features. For one thing, it's the first of the operations to come with its own ships. You've got a French destroyer, the Cyclone, and the British Antony. And the main differences between them, uh, well, I think one's got 120mm main calibre and the other's 130mm. Uh, but with the Cyclone, you're going to want to be using the smoke. And with the Antony, you're going to want to be using the defensive AA consumable. And it's pretty rubbish AA, but it doesn't have to be anything special because the planes you'll be facing are all tier 1, as you can see. So even with your really rubbish AA, it doesn't matter because you can shoot some of them down anyway. So this was on the NA server where I uh, got the 5 stars first. I've since done it on EU. It was a good mix for this particular run four Antonies and three Cyclones because the AA component is quite important. Two of the five secondary conditions are tied to the AA. So firstly you have to shoot down eight whole fighter squadrons and secondly you have to get 80 offensive plates, the torque bombers and the regular bombers. So uh, having a good mix of ships with defensive AA which uh, of course multiplies your base AA power by what is it times five times six um, even with the horrendous it's like six DPS or something like that but you get enough Antonies together with the uh, defensive AA and actually it can be quite effective against those tier one plates. The other feature that's new in this is the minefield and basically don't go in the minefield. It really is that simple and yet I've seen some people struggle with that regardless. <laughs> You're actually going to see somebody in this one that goes in the uh, the smaller minefield area, takes a hit and actually survives and then sails straight into the larger minefield area and hopefully you will facepalm just as much as I did witnessing it happen at the time. Now I've done it on uh, both NA and EU. Uh, in fact the EU run was a bit... Uh, I wasn't expecting to get five stars in that one. I was the only Antony, everyone else was in Cyclones. And I tried to position myself correctly for the planes and for the most part was able to. Um, but I think the rest of the, the, the players in the Cyclones were just obviously uh, doing well enough and maybe getting uh, lucky enough with the, uh, the RNG for shooting planes down that uh, somehow we got all five stars which I wasn't expecting to do. So you have the first couple of uh, um, planes to deal with. You get the initial fighter squadron which uh, um, you really do have to shoot down. I mean you get I think more fighter squadrons than you need to shoot down but it's not by a huge margin and the thing is you have to wipe those fighter squadrons. You've also got torpedo boats to deal with and we'll be getting the first of those very very shortly. Now the, the spawns for the planes and the number of planes and the types of planes that's all fixed as far as I can tell. The Schnell boots on the other hand uh, they do vary a little bit as to where they will appear but as to when they appear that seems to be more or less fixed. So sailing to uh, try and uh, intercept this wave of dive bombers that are coming in. I think if you've got one or two Antonies that are doing this, that's quite a good idea to weaken those waves of planes before they get to your main fleet. But if everybody's racing ahead and nobody's there to uh, actually protect the small ships, then that can be a bit of a problem. And one issue I have seen um, in uh, people you know, posting screenshots on Reddit and uh, on the forums is uh, you'll get people racing all the way ahead which you can do in the destroyers because they are faster than the uh, the small ships uh, but 
then the small ships are left completely undefended when the Schnell boots turn up because they sometimes can spawn in front and sometimes they'll spawn behind. So you need a good spread of ships all the way along the fleet and you need not all of your human players to be racing ahead to get to uh, Dover, to get to the end point. So, so far it's just been planes we've had to deal with and uh, we've not done too badly. We've shot down three of eight fighter squadrons already. Uh, the offensive planes, the strike planes, do tend to go for the, the small ships, the AI fleet that you're escorting, uh, but they will go for player ships as well. I mean, you saw a squadron of dive bombs go for me earlier. Uh, so you do have to not be completely complacent because you might be sailing along in a nice straight line and suddenly you've got torpedo bombers coming for you, which is rather nasty. These things also fling torpedoes. They've got a range of 3.6 kilometers, so they're pretty close range. And the reload is, I think, a little less than a minute, or is it a little more than a minute? I don't know. It's not a super quick reload, but, um, you know, it, I, I have a couple of times witnessed the boats, the Schnell boats, uh, boots even, uh, living long enough to actually get a reload. Um, but generally speaking, they'll get their torps off and uh, at that point they are dead because they're very small, fragile, little, fast boats. They don't take a lot of hits to kill. So that's that first wave of Schnell boots dealt with. There's uh, another group of fighters. As, as for consumables and captain points, uh, that's something else I should uh, cover. Um, because you're getting uh, separate special ships for this ops, uh, or for this operation, uh, they've each come with a, a 19 point captain, which is very nice. I've no idea if we'll get to keep that captain, but it's got 10 points already allocated. And as for the rest, I, I went with things like expert marksman. Jack of all trades on the Antony is very useful for getting the, uh, the slightly uh, faster uh, cooldown on the uh, defensive AA, of course. And if you've got a Victor Lima flag on there, that will help as well. Um, otherwise, um, I can't remember what else I put on. That's, that's four points. And then there must have been something else. I spent points on. I don't know. Maybe um, I'll put up a, a screenshot of the captain skills I chose for the Antony towards the end. Um, the uh, jack of all trades is maybe not that useful for the the cyclone, but you could still use it for the uh, the, the quicker um, ability to get smoke, of course. So that's more offensive planes coming in. You do get quite a lot of them. Uh, and yeah, there we go. That was the guy. That was the guy that blundered from one minefield into the other. Everyone else was doing very well. But for some reason, that guy um, didn't seem to quite understand that minefields are bad. But hopefully this was his first go. And he just didn't quite understand the concept of the minefield. Even though the operation does show you. Because you've got that one guy, Parks who goes in at the very start and immediately gets blown up in the minefield. But some people apparently don't even pay attention to that happening. So that's another defensive triggered. I can't remember if I was using the premium defensive on this. Oh, superintendent. That was that must be one of the skills I took. That must be one of the skills I took, because superintendent for the extra defensive would have been um, very, very useful. Anyway, so, um, yes, um, I've already run through most of my... Uh, defensives but I'm I'm holding on to one for a, a bit later on which I know I will definitely need a defensive AA for. We've got enough Antonys however that there'll be a number of people triggering theirs though so it, it will be uh, hopefully um, uh, enough when the time comes. So that's the group of one of the group of Schnell boots that can spawn behind and this is why you don't want to uh, leave your rear undefended as it were. Um, the only difficulty, I mean this this is maybe a little bit of a tricky bit here because you've got so many ships bunched up together and the, the narrow straight between these two uh, minefields. I mean the guy ahead of us, the guy that managed to get himself sunk by going into not one but both minefields didn't really have that ex this excuse but um, when you're in the middle of this mass of ships and you're maneuvering, maneuvering wildly it's not a particularly uh, big gap so I have once or twice come close to going in one of the minefields by not realizing how close I was to the border just because there's so many ships around me. So you might notice the shooting is uh, <laughs> it's not uh, like I got better at it on uh, on EU and it was also easier on EU because I had less ping to deal with uh, but just because they're so fast I think they're 43 knots 
the Schnell boots, which puts them on a par with the uh, the Leningrad and the Haborovsk. These things are seriously nippy, and because they're such small targets as well, even if you are ranging correctly, um, it can actually still be quite difficult to hit them, just because they have such a small profile, especially if they're coming towards you like that. So, ooh, this is uh, getting a little interesting. This is quite a lot of these things. I don't think I've ever had a situation where I um, have had to ram any of these, but, you know, this is probably the closest I came. The good thing is that, you know, they're all reloading and they don't have any other weapons apart from those two front-mounted uh, torp launchers, so um, going in amongst them like that is not especially dangerous, but uh, it's it's a little interesting if they, if they swarm you and they're that close. So this is one of the pivotal moments. You get a bunch of friendly fighters turning up and a big group of enemy fighters, and you really do have to preserve at least a few of those friendly fighter squads because you're going to need those friendly fighters to kill some of the later planes because otherwise it's very difficult to get the strike plane requirement because it's 80 planes remember that's quite a lot of planes you have to shoot down but the planes that your fighters your allied fighters shoot down count towards that uh, that uh, that limit so because we've had some squads that have survived, they will now go and attack the enemy strike planes, and those will count towards that secondary condition. So, getting some of those fighters to live, that's actually crucial. You have to have at least some Antonys in place at that time, uh, because it always happens in roughly the same place, to uh, nobble those enemy fighters. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very hard to do the five stars. And honestly, of the times I've I've completed this but not gotten five stars, it's the planes. Um, I think I've had one or two runs where we didn't get enough uh, civilian ships through because you have to have at least seven survivors. But for the most part, it was not meeting the planes requirement. So that was that was the tricky part. Killing all the Schnell boots that was actually relatively easy because generally speaking, everybody takes the time to uh, shoot those down. But I think maybe not everybody takes the time to control click on the plane squads. But to be fair, there are certain moments when it can get quite hectic and you're having to deal with both things in the air and on the surface at the same time. Now, having said what I said about not completing it with five stars, I don't think I've had a single run of this so far where we just flat out haven't completed it, where we failed. Um, in that regard, it's probably the easiest of the operations that there have been so far. Because I think in order to um, just straight up fail, uh, everybody would have to die pretty much. I mean, not getting the base minimum of 3,000 soldiers through, I think it's like if you lost the majority of the civilian fleet and the majority of your own ships, um, at that point, I guess that would be a, a you know, that would be meeting the fail condition. But that's, we've never even come close to it in the attempts I've done. Doubtless there will be somebody out there who will have been unfortunate enough that, that uh, you know, to, to, to get a group of people that all, I don't know, went in a minefield or something, um, where they just didn't have enough uh, surviving soldiers get through to the end. But, uh, yeah, in that regard, completing it is not difficult. Completing it with five stars, that's mildly tricky. So we're close to the end now, we've got the final waves of everything coming in. Um, there's only a couple more offensive planes left but we've, uh, that we need to get, but we've got our fighters actually doing that for us almost. So having um, you know, also met the Schnell route requirement, this is now just to uh, prevent them from sinking anybody. It's not because we need to, to kill them for the secondary, it's just we need to kill them so they don't kill us. Which is still a pretty good reason to knock them out the water. You know, that, that's not like that's not a valid reason at all. So, um, as we're approaching the last bit, um, I suppose I might cover the last thing to talk about, which is that there is an associated collection with the uh, the Dunkirk operation. Uh, so it's not like the Bismarck campaign where it was a full blown campaign, but it is still. Um, a collection that's worth completing because you get a, a 10 point captain out of it because so you can get a 10 point french captain from getting four out of five stars from the dunkirk op itself and then if you complete the collection you get a 10 point royal navy captain which might be quite useful as the royal navy battleships are due to appear in the relatively near future but uh, the 
skills that the captain comes with, or the skill bonuses that that, uh, that 10 point RN captain gets, I think they're probably more useful for cruisers, if memory serves. Either way, uh, it's quite nice to have another collection, and uh, as with the Bismarck collection, you know, you can click on the things and it gives you more information, and it's all very nice. Um, there's fewer things to get this time, and uh, as the thing's running for two weeks, I mean, I don't think it should be that difficult to get all, uh, I think it's 16 items to collect this time, something like that. Uh, the most you can get is two crates a day, though, so it, it does mean you'll have to play the game a certain amount, and you have to complete the uh, Dunkirk op itself to trigger the, the start of, of the, the collection, to, to be able to collect those Dunkirk crates. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's all right. Um, even if you just play it once to trigger the collection and then you uh, concentrate on getting the, the Dunkirk crates themselves, which I think it's every 2,000 points of base XP gets you a, a, a crate and it's up to, like, two crates a day. Um, it's worth triggering that because, you know, getting a 10-point captain is nice. And that's primarily why I've been playing the Ops anyway, is to get those 10-point captains. The day of premium doesn't matter so much to me because I have quite a lot of premium time that carried over from World of Tanks. And I've still actually got quite a lot of gold on World of Tanks that I periodically top up my uh, EU premium time with. But uh, yeah, um, overall I thought this was quite a nice uh, operation. And um, the fact that it, it's got its own unique ships, you know, we might see things like this in future. And, and Wargaming themselves have said that this operation will return in a modified form at some point down the line. Uh, so they'll keep the basic escort mission um, intact, I presume, but, you know, it'll have the uh, maybe the Dunkirk branding taken away from it, and maybe it'll be rejigged for uh, use with regular destroyers rather than having its own special destroyers. So, um, yeah, this was um, this was only something like my second or third attempt on NA to, to get five stars on EU. It took a little bit longer, but uh, not that many more goes. And uh, overall, it's, it's a, a fairly enjoyable operation. Not a particularly difficult one to do once you know where everything spawns. And uh, hopefully we'll see some more like it in future because it was actually quite fun. Uh, minefields, though, um, I'll maybe just have this final note. Minefields, I think, in operations are absolutely fine, but if minefields come to, to regular gameplay, I think that would not be a good thing. But I, I, I can't see how they would. You know, as a mechanic in an operation, I think it's absolutely okay, but as a mechanic in a, a random game or, or ranked or whatever, um, I, I don't think it would be that popular, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. So anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, video. If you have, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.